so as as you can see from 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 this figure this is the user plane overview like for standalone and non-standalone and as written in the top left here the user plane in general protocol stack is responsible for transferring the application data for example if you have application data at the user side and the application data in general and you would like to transfer it between the end user and the application server the here is the application server and this is the user so this is the user plane is responsible for transferring the data from to ue and the application server this is a first responsibility for that and the application layer which is the one at the very top right is doing that through multiple other uh, lower layers which is including the tcb ib and this will be explained in the very details in the upcoming slides as well and just the important part that the tc the application layer decide what kind of transport transport means the data will be trans transferred through which transport layer based on the services for example as you can see in the bottom left table here if you have http service so for example you're doing web browsing or internet browsing so this need to use a tcb because tcb is like a, a real world protocol which is ensured that the a less packet loss because at the end we need to have as you know http or the file uh, transfer require a very low uh, low packet losses and so this one for example once we do http browsing this so the application layer will know that it need to use a tcb and for example the the http this will be communicated through a particular port for example http using port 80 ftb using port 21 and you have other services related to for example the rtb which is related to the uh, audio and video this is using udb so this is how the application layer will know so we'll cover this in details in the next slide but the the part i would like to cover because as a high life from high level perspective because this will not be covered in the next slides it's related to the part in between here between the uh, uh, anchor or the ubf layer and junib and the ib layer in general uh, starting from the ib layer tell the ubf and junib how the ib packet is being transferred from the high level perspective the IP packets actually will be transferred through something called GTBU. Okay, this GTBU it's like a protocol uh, called G uh, GBRS tunnel endpoint. This is a protocol encapsulate the IP packets which is coming from the IP layer and creates a tunnel between the IP network, the IP network, and the, uh, the IP network and between the the UBF user plane function. This create a tunnel between both of them. And this, then this tunnel, this tunnel ensures the tunnel created by the GTBU ensures that the user data is delivered to the correct video session and quality of service in the 5G core network. This is how, what what is the GTBU tunnel do? Then what it will do? The GTBU tunnel encapsulated packets, which is being sent from the end, are then forwarded over the N3 interface from the UBF. It will be forwarded through the N3 uh, N3 interface. Which connects the IB network to the UBF, uh, and uh, the UBF is the uh, UBF is the 5G. Uh, I'll say it, the first entry of the 5G core network. So, in simpler terms, the IB packets are, uh, IB packets are transferred through a GTBU. Okay, the IB packets is transferred through a GTBU. Uses a UDB a protocol. This is a transport layer, uh, a transport layer for UDB. GTB using UDB because actually it require a low, very low latency. And the retransmission or any problems in the packets will be handled by the lower other layers. This will be explained in detail. So it doesn't require any mechanism to secure. There is no, for example, packet losses or retransmission and so on, because this will be handled by the other protocols. So in general, this combination ensures that you have a fast, efficient, and session-specific data transfer within the mobile network. And just if you look into this part, this is just you can just take snapshot from here. This is just summarizing each of those uh, layers: application, TCB, IP, and GTBU. Um, rule context and why it's being used here and there. Uh, last point here in this slide, I would like to ad address here that this is the user plane. The control plane is very simple, as you can see here. And just on top of the TCB, you will have the RRC layer. We have here the SDAP. Uh, is the AAP layer. This is used usually in 5G standalone only. We'll be explaining this part in the next slide. But the main difference is that you, from the protocol, protocol instead of user plane protocol, you're using the RRC. So the, let's move now to the interesting part in the next session, in the next slide. So as, as you can see in this slide, actually, this is, we'll be covering the high level part, uh, also related to how the data is being transferred. As you can see here, I summarized it into 10 points, but actually it's even more. But let's take it slowly one by one to understand what we have. For example, from the end-to-end -end perspective, the first thing will happen whenever the user, you as a user, you are trying to do, for example, a web browsing, right? Let's assume you are taking example as highlighted here. This is the architecture we have. 
I'm giving an example here about the HTTP that the user is trying to download a web page. Okay. And here I assumed that the BTC, B, BTS or the GNB is using CU and U high layer split architecture where the DU GNB is hosting the RLC, Mac and physical and the centralized unit is hosting the is, is tab and BTC layer. This is as a high level the point view. So how how this end-to-end -end call flow will be happening? So application, as you mentioned here, assume the end user, the user is trying to download a web page. A web page. So one, the first thing we'll do that it will be sending HTTP GET command towards the application server. So this is will be the first step. Then the application server will know that the user is trying to download a web page, so he's using the HTTP. So in this case, the, the, the data which is in the application will be transferred through the transport or the TCB. A transport protocol because again transfer tcb is used for http as we highlighted in the previous slide and the reason for that it, it requires a very high reliability that you require a very packet loss because at the end you cannot download a page or a file where it's having a lot of packet losses right at the end you cannot see all the contents right it's not something related to the the video streaming or for example the audio, uh, audio calls and so on so the application here will know it need now to download the page towards the TCB IP. So this is what will be the first thing here. So once the TCB IP received the packets coming from the application layer, it will start adding headers and forward this data to IP layer. Actually, the header part, you need to know, it's a really very, very important thing. You need to understand it whenever you study about any of, of these kind of topics because the header will make it very clear to you about any of the functionality. For example, if you look into the bottom left here, we have the TCB header format. You can see the data coming from the application there. There is an header as added, uh, being, being added for this data. And this header will be helping the TCB layer, for example, for the retransmission to track the, the packets to know whether it's coming uh, out of order or it's coming in order or it's being packet loss and so on. And also to try to identify which IP layer is going to be using, used here. So for example, here, there is a something called source port and destination port within the header. This is just source port and, and destination port identifying the client and server or the entities where we are going, the destination where, where we would like to send this kind of packets and so on. We'll explain this part in the TCP part as well. But the most important here, that's adding something called sequence number. And sequence number here, you will see it also in the BDCB and the NRLC because sequence number is mainly used to try to track the packets. Each packet will have a sequence number. So for example, this sequence number can help to, for example, I assign for the first packet a sequence number one, second packet sequence number two, third packet sequence number four, and so on. So this like will be helping to track this kind of packets to know whether it's being lost or coming out of delivery. So this will be helping the application layer. We have multiple other things like checksum for, for example, to check whether there is any errors in the packets or not. And when sites, we'll try to cover this as a high level perspective in the TCB point of view. But in summary, the TCB will be adding a header to the data, which will be helping the TCB itself to do this kind of reliable data transfer. Because as you know, also TCB is supporting new transmission ARQ, which is uh, for the used for direct transmission. So once the data is being sent, now it will be forwarded to the IP layer. Then the IP layer again, it will add its own packet a header to the data as well, which is coming for the TCB. And this uh, again, just quickly, this will uh, this uh, header will identify whether this is IB version six, IB version four, and whether there is any fragmentation or not. But this is one of the things the CB will try all the time not to to uh, to to ensure there is no IP fragmentation. So this also can be information in case if there is a fragmentation, this would be highlighted within the header. And also the protocol being used, it will be addressed within the header. For example, here it knows it's coming from the TCB protocol, which is using uh, protocol number six. And also it will have some kind of header checksum, which is validate the data integrity. And the most important, it will be including the, as highlighted, the IB version and source and destination IB addresses to know where this data is going to be sent for which which destination is just the exact address and so on. So this is point number five. Once it's received from the IP layer to the IB network, then the IB network will packet, IB, the IB packet, which is coming from the IB layer, will be routed through the IB network layer towards the UBF. And as you know, UBF or user plane function in the 5G is the first uh, or the core entry point for the 5G core, is the 5G core entry point. So this is what's responsible for, as you can see here, once IP packet being received, 
which is the TCP IP packets coming from, from the application towards the user plane function, it will be mapping, the user plane will be mapping that into a specific quality of service. It knows that whether, whether this data needs a, a specific quality of service and within which PDU session. Then it will be for, forwarding this data through the NGO interface to the SDAP layer. And uh, the SDAP layer, as, as you know, this one, which is mainly responsible for mapping this kind of quality of service to a specific data radio bureau. As you know, the RAND protocol in general is dealing with data radio bureau, DRP, right? So this is just very simple, as you see in these two pictures. If the data is coming here, for example, this is saying this is the tunnel one, this is a tunnel two, we have BDU session one, and this is quality of service. For example, we have three packets, each one have a different quality of service, E, B, and T. So the uh, SDAP layer will know, okay, it will tell them, guys, this uh, quality of service A need to be mapped to DRB1, B need to be DRB2, and C need to be for DRB3, and so on, as you can see here, and also on the bottom right here. So again, this is the main responsibility of the SDAP layer to map the quality of service to be mapped into a specific data radio bureau. And then moving forward, what once the data moves from the SW layer to the DC layer in the downlink direction, you can see that BTC again will be adding a header on, the, on top of this data, which is coming from the upper layer. And the most important for now to know about the, the information that the header is related to sequence number. Okay, the sequence number because the sequence number used for, for example, as mentioned here in this point number eight, reordering at the receiver side. Once the data being received at, at the at the receiver side, which is the UE the here, this will know that this packet is coming. For example, one, if he received packet one, two, and he was expecting three, then he received four. He will know that this packet is out of order, so he will be waiting for a specific timer to make a reordering for the packet in order to transfer to the other layer. So the sequence number is very important for the retransmission to track the, the packets and also for the reordering uh, at the receiver side. So this is the most important one for now. We're also covering other of the headers, but the headers of DCV is not that much. Today, actually, we'll be covering the RLSV, which is actually one of very, very, I will not say complicated, but like have a lot of things to be explained, this will be explained today. So the RLC layer again will be adding a header on top of the BDC view, which is coming here. So the more you go down, the, the higher the headers, the more the headers you are coming, you are getting. So you get the RLC header again. It will be adding a sequence number related to from the RLC uh, perspective, and this sequence number I will be explaining in details what to do exactly. Again, it, it uh, needs for reassembly at the the RLC receiver and also multiple other things I will be explaining in details here, but it will be adding a header and forwarding the data towards the Mac layer. And as you can see here, this is just a quick summary here. This is, a, as you can see, this is AMC uh, acknowledgement mode RLC layer. We are using acknowledgement more here because we are using HTTP. So this like will be using, as you know, the RLC having uh, three transmission modes. I'll explain those in high level also in the RLC part which is a transport uh, TM knowledge mode and acknowledgement. So this will be using acknowledgement mode, which is having this capability of uh, automatic repeat request, which is uh, ARQ. So here are this layer, there can be a segmentation, resegmentation, retransmission, and also reassembly at the receiver. This will be explained in details. So the RLC will be forwarding the data towards the MAC layer. Then MAC layer's main job is doing, one of the main job is doing the multiplexing for the data was coming from the RLC into one transport block or two transport block, depending on the requirements. Then it will be forwarding that part through the transported channel. For example, here, transported channel will be down and share the channel. Then it will go through the errand phase and it will be moving back up to the e. And here you will have a reverse. For example, once we go to the MAC layer, you will have a demultiplexing for the data. Here, the RLC, if the data was being segmented, the RLC will have reassembly. This all will be explained in details. And in the BDCV, as we highlighted, it was adding a sequence number. Here, it will just doing the reordering if needed, if the data is coming out further. And also other jobs, I will be explaining all of them in the BDCV part. Then it will be going, going back from SDAP until it reaches to the application layer. One of the mo most important uh, things I would like to highlight before moving to the next slide, that there is multiple retransmission mechanisms within all these kind of things. For example, the TCV can do a retransmission. The BDCB can do a retransmission. RLC can do a retransmission. 
and Mac also can do direct transmission, but the more robust and faster one is HAR, which is a Mac layer, because this is using hybrid, automa hybrid automatic repeat request, while the TCP is using direct RQ, automatic repeat request, also RLC, RLC is using automatic, automatic repeat request, but all of these is being used to guarantee that a less packet loss and the data real reality is, is very high to ensure this kind of service, HTTP or a fast file transfer is being happened in a proper way. Also, there is a retransmission of the BDC layer. I was explaining that part, but it's mainly within within during the intergenerity handover. I'll explain how this being, being happening, but in the BDCB session. And and that's it for this part.